Supporters of this channel, welcome back! There are many things I want to cover in this video. Let me run them through with you. First, I would like to give a grand summary of all the biotech companies I've covered so far and my philosophy of investing in this sector. Second, I'd like to provide a mega update to my second favorite biotech company, Illumina. Third, for the first time in this channel, I'm going to show you how I do options trading. Stay tuned for it. But before that, let's roll that intro. I've been teaching biology since 2004. On this channel, I hope to simplify and explain the science behind the companies that's driving the genomics revolution one video at a time. I noticed a troubling trend in the comment section that a lot of viewers are taking information from companies at face value without doing much, if any, research. Some of the comments feels like PR releases from companies word for word with little to no understanding of the scientific fundamentals. This is a motivation for me to break down the science into smaller chunks so as to help you make informed investment decisions. And to that end, I always approach every company with a critical eye. Did that frighten you? I hope you are not watching this in the middle of the night. For every biotech company that I cover, I begin quite skeptical and look at the signs to see if it can convince me. If it does, then I'll look at the arguments about it and to see whether the counter arguments can hold water. If round after round, the scientific principles is watertight, then my conviction increases. This will lead to my final investment decision. If not, it gets chucked away. That's why in my comments to critics of my videos, I always bring out scientific facts. If new viewers are to look at the comments, they can see both sides of opinions, the strength as well as the weaknesses. I try to avoid finger pointing as well as attacking the character of the other individual. The more you go about the process, the more you develop a spidey sense of whether a company is pure bullshit, needs time to prove itself, or is an immediate buy. And that is the value of my videos to you and I hope you look forward to more critical eyes. One example of a company that made me change my mind was Illumina. As mentioned earlier, I approached it with negative preconceptions. In fact, the very first video I made of this company, link in the video description below, I was really skeptical. However, my frozen perception started to thaw when I compared it to Pacific Biosciences. In fact, the water started evaporating when I look at what the business is doing when ARK Invest and Chicken Genius Singapore said that it sucked. Finally, reaching peak excitement when the company showed me that they are indeed worth it. And that I summarized in a previous video, link in the video description below. And in summary, these are the companies that I've covered, and these are the ones left standing. And Illumina, talk about it, we shall. I'm very frustrated at the often rehashed argument that Illumina is not innovating. And ARK Invest was guilty of amplifying this message the loudest at the moment. It sold 2020 and now it's 2021. Hi yo! Illumina recently announced that they are evolving their platform. Now, Illumina's suite of services involves both the detection of the small as well as the large mutations. I'm going to give a very quick overview of what the difference is all about. Small mutations are typically the cause of single gene diseases such as sickle cell anemia, where mutations arise from substitutions, insertions, or deletions whereas large mutations cover larger parts of a chromosomes and can be classified as structural or numerical. Illumina aces at providing results for small mutations detection. That is all news, but in addition to that, it offers coverage of large mutations as well. Let me tell you why this is so exciting. Illumina provides many platforms which are basically machines using Illumina technology. In this case, a machine called Nixsec 500, just like the other Illumina machines, is a plug and play platform. Pick the use case that you want, order its relevant reagents, and associated software unlocks and you can begin to use it. So one hospital or a research institute just needs to buy one machine and can share it with everyone. All you need to do is for the user to buy the relevant reagents, 
queue for the service and let the machine run 24-7. This is why Illumina provides large savings and with widespread adoption. You don't need to buy so many machines with new use cases, you only need one. And with that, let's go back to the next stack platform. One of the new modules that is offered is called NIPT. It allows one to investigate and confirm large mutations, whether it is structural or numerical. Not only that, Illumina is trialing it with a Thai diagnostic laboratory, NGG Thailand, for in vitro diagnosis of large mutations. This is very important because only properly evaluated technologies can be used for clinical diagnosis. And this is a fundamental requirement for labs that are certified by the College of the American Pathologists or the Joint Commission International. And what's more important is that there is proper testing and data for the new Illumina module on the Nexac 500. There are 2,300 blood cells samples evaluated from pregnant mothers received at the laboratory who are either singly or have twin pregnancies. At first read, it achieved 98.8% accuracy in QC in one run. That is great data to start off with and this module is already registered for use in Thailand, Vietnam, Singapore, South Korea, Australia, New Zealand, Israel, South Africa, and across Europe whilst waiting for approval for the rest. There's no competitor with this level of achievement right now. Yeah, I agree with our invest. There's no innovation. And I'm not done yet. Illumina is working with a Belgian consortium comprising of eight genetic centers using the Illumina technology to diagnose rare developmental disorders in routine clinical practice. This study tests 800 pediatric patients for the specific purpose of insurance reimbursements for the diagnostic test. This is game changing! So, not only does Illumina have an iron grip on the research applications, it is also taking over the clinical applications as well, which has far more stringent requirements. So where does that lead in Vite? Now I want to take time to recognize Dr. Alex Aravenis and his scientific team for tirelessly pushing ahead. He's one of the key personnel earlier in Illumina developing the technology for transcriptomics, which is adopted by another biotech company, 10x Genomics. He later left for Grail to further develop the use of cell-free DNA in cancer screening. Now that he's back because of the recent acquisition, I'm waiting with breath abated at what is to come. And on that note, we segue into the news update for Grail. Grail has recently announced their first to market multi-cancer blood test. This definitely has caused a meteoric rise in the Illumina stock price, and which we're gonna talk about later. But first, let's compare Grail to Invite. Both can do cancer screening, but Grail has superior scientific fundamentals. Let me explain. Invite does genetic screening by collecting some skin or blood cells to look at the gene sequences of a select panel of genes to determine the risk of a person developing cancer, for example. As I've mentioned before, having gene sequence mutations does not mean that the person will have cancer. It depends on a variety of factors, including the environment. This kind of screening will open a Pandora's box. Like, is there cancer right now? Where should we look for it? If it's not present, should we continue? And for how long should we continue? Answering these questions could increase costs and can potentially be a wild goose chase. Also, this will put a potential patient in a prolonged panic mode. Do you want that for yourself? In contrast, Grail's gallery test is different because it is definitive. Cancer is a multi-step process involving interactions with the genetic makeup of an individual, as well as the environment. Yes, there could be a potential cancer gene mutation, but it could mean nothing for decades, if not longer. 
one single cell have to undergo sustained multiple mutation events and selection before it can become cancerous. During this transformation process, cell-free DNA are released to indicate that cancer is coming and that is when GRAIL will pick it up identifying the cancer signature using AI. GRAIL's technology can pick up cancer right before it is about to make a move. This will not yield a false positive result just because there is a positive gene mutation picked up by in vitae screening. Not only that, some mutations may involve genes which are not routinely known to cause cancer. So GRAIL can pick it up and the in vitae screening may likely miss because in vitae predefines the genes that they specifically look for. Now, don't trust me, let's pour through the data from the clinical trials conducted by GRAIL. Let's have a quick recap first. There are already four clinical trials currently ongoing managed by GRAIL. The SUMMIT study is on course to enrol 25,000 individuals in the UK for early multiple cancer detection with a focus on heavy smokers. The Pathfinder study has enrolled 6,200 individuals who are doing parallel routine health checks. The CCGA study enrolled 15,000 participants across US and Canada with a focus on long-term observation of the gallery results and outcome. The last and the biggest of which is Strive, which enrolled 100,000 women, oh my, at the time of their routine mammogram screening. The following data was presented at the American Society of Clinical Oncology meeting. In the Pathfinder study, interim results show that Grail's gallery picked up accurately 29 cancers across 13 tissues or organs. Wow! Of the new cancers detected, more than half of them were detected early. Wow, again! By the way, that means that something can be done to prevent life-threatening cancer progression. Imagine if you were picked up early like that. The positive predictive value is established, although it is not the final figure as the trial is not fully completed. That is important because the value allows accredited laboratories to adopt this technology as part of their routine diagnostic testing. Now let's get back for more data. The AI that GRAIL uses produce a whooping 84.2% of the time correct prediction of single origin cancers and 100% of the time, wow, when considering single or second origin cancers. Where second origin means that the cancer has spread to another organ. That is amazing result! Not only that, remember that the AI made these predictions and it will only get better and better, especially taking into context that there is four ongoing clinical trials right now, of which one of them is of 100,000 participants. Wow! <laughs> Having shown so many study results, it's now time to show my own investigational study. I've been thinking back in January of this year of doing options trading as a way to earn semi-passive income. This is due to the fact that bank interest is abysmal right now and coupled to the fact that inflation is happening and I'm paying more for goods and services. So in addition to stock investments, I started experimenting with trading options. Of all the option strategies out there that I've researched on, I decided on cash secure options as the highest level of risk that I could tolerate. So I picked the stock and then set aside $53,500 as collateral. Then, I sold a single put option of $31.55 on the 19th of May with a one-month expiry. On the following month, let the option expire. Since one unit is 100 shares of a stock, that is approximately $3,155 that I get to keep for the month. That is a 5.89% return. For the same amount of money, my bank is giving me less than $100 of interest. 
Oh gosh. In June, I repeated this whole process again with a one month expiry right after the release of this video. Now, options trading is risky and if you don't understand the game, you're going to lose your pants. I spent three months watching countless YouTube videos from options traders as well as reading countless websites on the topic and finally sitting for a basic investor test conducted by SIPS, link in the video description below, before I made that jump. <sighs> but it did not come without sacrifices. While I was coordinating the money movement to the new account that I've opened with the options trading enabled, I missed out on buying more Illumina shares because the price dipped for a short period of time below my previous purchase price. And when I was ready to make that purchase, the price skyrocketed. Ah! the second time. So do you want me to talk more about options trading as well as my thoughts of trading options in biotech companies? Let me know in the comment section below. Before I end, do remember to do your due diligence for the biotech stocks I cover. So till the next time, you've been awesome and I'm Benjamin Yang. See you in the next video.